The last three points I need to cover with you are transactional emails, training materials, and the setup requirements. Uh, transactional emails, uh, these are the emails that are sent out to your client on purchase. So um, basically just a receipt, and you can see all the placeholders that we use. So you can actually just formulate your own email here. We use HTML as well. Um, and if you're comfortable just editing this, you can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, you can use our default like this. Um, and of course, just be sure that um, you change the like for the fan page or just delete this entirely if you don't have a fan page. But obviously, you need to change that URL um, to your fan page there as well. And of course, your name at the bottom there would also be a good move. So pretty straightforward. All you want, want to do here is just choose the type of, of service provider that you have. If it's a standard SMTP server, you can just use this and enter in all your SMTP server details. Alternatively, we do have some support for uh, you know the more mainstream apps out the box, such as uh, Postmark or Mandrel or, or SendGrid. And, and these ones use a username and an API key. So um, that obviously just changes the form slightly. So you'll just enter your details in there and you can obviously test the connection. Uh, to make sure that um, that your emails are sending and when you click test connection this will actually send an email to your email address and you can actually make sure that it shows up there um, bear in mind that it does send the email with all these placeholders it doesn't sh actually populate these placeholders with any information and that's just simply because it's a test email but your clients will obviously have these placeholders replaced with the information that they provide during the checkout process right so um, training materials Basically, uh, we do provide you with uh, some initial training materials for each of the applications. And you can find the training materials in slash training like that. And you will um, be able to find that basically if you just add training to the end of the URL where you've installed your, um, your white label app. So if I just go ahead and refresh, you'll see that that video getting started is showing up here. And that's this video here. So if I add another video, and I'm just going to copy that URL, and then I'll just say another video, and just add that on like that. Okay, and click Save. All right, and if I refresh here now, you'll see there is a, another video that's just been added. Okay. Um, for HTML, basically all this HTML will show up in the top of the page. So if I just put some forum ipsum like that, just to show you what that looks like. Um, you can use any HTML you want here. So um, you might want to maybe put a heading in here. Okay, and if I click save here, and if I refresh, okay, there's the H1, um, and it's the text that I inserted, and of course there's my link as well. Um, and then your videos will show up below, and I believe files show up right at the bottom, so let's see if I can find a small file to upload. Let's use this one for example. Don't forget to click the green plus, it's really critical, otherwise it will not upload that file. You can upload more than one file, of course. And I'm going to click Save here again. And refresh the page. And if I scroll right down to the bottom. Okay, under Downloads, there's that document that I've just uploaded. And if I click on the document, as you can see, it allows me to download the file, which I'll just open for you. And there's my file. So that's how training works. Um, and then setup requirements is just basically any documentation specific to the application that you're um, busy setting up. So uh, certain applications do have specific uh, requirements such as SEO Snapshot um, and Ticket Hub as well. So I do recommend that you do check out that documentation. This is pretty a simple one. Um, you will notice that um, SEO Snapshot will have a little bit more information because it requires cron tasks. So all the information is there and so I do suggest you do consult that. And I think that concludes this video.